Good afternoon, welcome to another online service from Bethany Evangelical Church in Paisley. We just pray that you be blessed today as you join with us as we sing some songs picked by people in the church and as we read God's word a little later on. May you know God's presence with you today. Father, we come before you again for another online service. And Father, we just ask that you would be with every single person who's watching today. We really pray a blessing on everyone who comes in contact with us. We thank you for the many people who have watched online and been blessed from listening to the songs, singing along, listening to the message and, and reading your word. And Father, that's our whole ethos here at Bethany we we want to sing your praise and we want to learn from from Holy Scripture about who the Lord Jesus is and what he means to us so Father as we meet today we pray that we would know your presence with us and we ask this all in your name Amen
And now, the continuation of our short video segments.
good afternoon. Thanks for taking the time to, to listen as we turn to the Word of God and just listen to what He has to say to us. I want to read uh, one verse with you. It's found in Ephesians chapter 2. It's one of the letters that Paul wrote. And it's just one verse, verse 13. Uh, and Paul says, he's writing to Christians. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Let me just read that verse again. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. As I said, Paul is writing to a church in Ephesus, to Christians, and he's reminding them of the life that they lived before they put their trust in the Lord Jesus, before they became Christians. And he's describing the kind of life that they lived. And he does that in the previous verse, in verse 12. He describes them, he mentions the kind of conditions that they live with. Verse 12, he says that they were separate from God, separate from God's presence, from the presence and separate from Christ. They were alone in the world. He also said that they were excluded from God's people, ostracised and abandoned. And he also says that they were strangers to the promises of God, powerless, not able to do anything about the life that they lived. And he also then goes on to say, and as a result of that, this is what it meant to them. It meant they were living without hope. It meant they were living without God in the world. And as we turn to the word of God and as we listen to what God has to say to us, he's describing, Paul is describing the life that they had. But it's the same message to you and I today. Chapter 2 in the Ephesian letter is the great chapter of God's grace. God is telling us of how we are sinful and are children of wrath, children of disobedience. But because God loves us, because of his great love, he gives us the opportunity to have a relationship with him, to go on and to experience him through grace, Paul tells us, we're saved, not through our wealth, not through the life that we live, not through our country of birth, not even the religion we associate with, but through the Lord Jesus and through his amazing grace. Paul tells us in chapter 2 verse 8, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and the not of yourself, it is the gift of God. And Paul is really describing in verse 12, everyone who tries to live their life without God. And I wonder whether that describes the life you have. I'm using words like separated and estranged and, 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 and excluded. And you might be listening and thinking, well, my life's fine and everything's okay with my life. That doesn't describe me. Most people really don't give God much thought. Most people don't really think about what God's word is telling us. In fact, they might actually be laughing at it. But despite their ignorance and despite their unwillingness to listen to what God is actually saying, he tells us the truth. They don't give God or the Lord Jesus much thought at all. And despite this, God loves us. Despite this, he has done everything for us in order that we could have a relationship with him. And again, that great contrast in verse 13 that we read together right at the beginning. I'll read it again. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. And that's the message of the gospel. Every one of us has the opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our saviour and to experience life with him. And that verse tells us really two main things. First of all, it tells us that that salvation is, is through the blood of Christ. We access God's love and salvation as a result of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross. That was an, an historical event that took place at Calvary in Jerusalem almost 2,000 years ago. And because of that death, burial and resurrection, we can be forgiven. We can have a life with God 
if we believe that he died on the cross for us and we put our trust in him. But it's more than that. Because Paul again reminds us as he, as he writes that verse that we need to be in Christ. Not only did the Lord Jesus die on the cross for us, he's offering us a relationship to be near him, to be identified with Christ and be given that personal relationship to live for him. He's asking us to be his disciple. He's asking us to be a follower of the Lord Jesus, to get to know him, to have him in our life and live our life more like him and less like the old life we live, we used to live. Again, you might be thinking, well, you know, my life is fine. I don't need God. There's a man in the Old Testament, he wrote a number of songs in the book of Psalms. His name is Asaph. His job was to look after the Ark of the Covenant. So he lived near the presence of God. And he thought about those in, in Psalm 73, about those who lived their life and didn't care about God. And at one point, this is how he describes them. He says, they have no struggles. They are healthy and they're strong. They're free from the burdens common to man. They're not plagued by human ills. They're carefree and they increase in wealth. And he tells us in the psalm, he almost gets jealous. He gets, he gets envious of the situation. But then he, he tells us something. He, he spends time in the presence of God. And this is what he says. Until I enter the presence of God, then I understood their final destiny. He sees things as God sees them. And when we come to the word of God and we listen to what God has to say to us, we start to see things from a different perspective. And that's my ask of you this evening, to listen to the word of God. What does it have to say to you and I? When Asaph got an eternal perspective, when he listened to what God was saying, he understood that actually the life that he thought was attractive wasn't. And as you listen to what's being said again this afternoon, I pray that the word of God touches your life. Not what I say, but what the word of God is saying. This is how Asaph finishes Psalm 73. He says, as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Each of us has a choice as we listen to what's being said this evening. Um, do you wish to live a life for self? But from God's perspective, a life that's separate, a life that's excluded, a life that's estranged to him? Or are you willing to accept his amazing grace, his great salvation, his willingness to make you a child of God and to give you everything? to give you eternal life and to take your sin and to deal with it once and for all at the cross and never to be brought up in, in judgment again because the Lord Jesus has taken all of the punishment. Asaph was glad that he made the right choice. As for me, it is good to be near God. Let me finish with that verse that we read right at the very beginning, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. Remember, Paul is writing to Christians uh, and he, just, he talks earlier on of the life that they did have and what it was like, but he says this, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. And our prayer is that you listen to what God's word is telling us, that you realise that he's speaking to you directly. And realise you have an opportunity to turn your back on the old sinful life and go on and live for him. We pray that you do that. And if you're interested at all, I'm sure the Christians who meet in the church would love just to be able to share more of God's word. Get in touch, we ask. And we pray that you listen to what's being said. Thanks again for taking the time to listen. <laughs>
thanks for joining with us here in Bethany. It's been good to have you here. If you've enjoyed the songs, which have been chosen, as we said, by people in the church, if one of your favourites has been sung this week, leave a wee comment down below and uh, we'll see it. Or if you want to send us an email, you can see the email and web addresses in the description at the start. And as always, a little message here for you. Stay safe and God bless.